Kia ora, Koto e nā mihi nui ki a koe Cameron Tukapua. <laughs> and nā mihi nui everyone who is tuning into this either live or on the replay. Uh, we are combining some significant modi here <laughs> on this day of the new moon aqua dragon ignited in aquarius what a day Karen, what a how are you? Oh, <laughs> oh i feel amazing i can feel the magic of this dragon emerging it's like we've all been waiting right there's such a go forward energy now you can feel it it's like like this in the atmosphere awesome love it so i'm really excited about this interview and uh just to start it off because if people <laughs> don't understand this in our culture, we give a little intention, a, a karaki or a prayer or an invocation, which just means that this is a divine meeting of hearts with us together and with you, holding space for each other. Very Aquarian. So I'm into sung karakia this year, so I'm just going to sing a little song about the heart and about love. Mm -hmm. Hey, Aroha, Te Whakapono, Te Rangi Mari e Ta. Chacho, chacho e. Yeah. <laughs> Mori Ora. Okay, we're present. And Ooh. I'm going to introduce this wonderful woman that uh, we are going to be learning so much from today. If you do not know, Cameron Tukapua is a healer, a leader, teacher, and visionary. Her lifelong practice in Chinese medicine and archetypal studies are the foundations for her offerings. Cameron has written a book of heartfelt living available on Amazon and has been featured in Thrive Global. <laughs> My dear friend Cameron helps people connect the heart and the mind and claim their power to rule their lives. Woo! Yeah, Welcome. <laughs> Let's do it. Take it away, Cameron. Here is the first question. Okay, three okay. Words I'm waiting, waiting. Words. Here we go, here we go. What's your what is your mission, vision, and three words? Connecting hearts and minds. There you go, people. And what, how does this manifest for you in terms of working with your community and inspiring people in your circle? Well, my focus is helping people get a bigger view of reality and uh, a, a to recognize how we're living in these three worlds. You know, we're living in on the land and the, the foundation of the body, and we're living in the upper world, the spirits, the ancestors, the, the visions, the hopes, dreams, and then the middle world of relationships and connection to other. So, you know, in many indigenous cultures, we talk about the heart as the bridge between the world. So when we live from the heart, we can bring this world of the manifest form life, you know, our homes, uh, structures of our lives, uh, you know, the places we go to every single day, our body and being at ease in our body. And we can bring the life of our dreams, hopes, possibilities, yearnings, you know, we can bring those in and express them in our practical earthly realm and in our relationships. So when we connect the heart, you know, which is the ruler of awareness, it's like our heart is our personal portal to the highest view of life. It's the divine awareness. Mm -hmm. And when we use that divine awareness to steer the thinking mind, which is, you know, the everyday manager of life, mm -hmm. then we can uh, live larger lives. Yeah. So there's also... And immediately I start thinking, so, so how are some of the ways where we might not be so linked to our heart? Our heart? How does that manifest if we're, if we're not living from the heart? If, you know, what do you see in terms of in people who are just 
Oh, well, I, I think we, a lot of us, we've all been conditioned, you know, by our social conditioning, our family conditioning, educational, whatever country we live in. So there's a lot of overlays. There's a lot of mental overlays. We've been told how to be, how to think. Mm. We've been uh, brainwashed from a very young age to think in a certain way. So if we're not careful, we become, become think dominant. So then the mind is working a little harder than it needs to, and it's running all sorts of, you know, bylines and stories and fabricating realities that don't actually exist. And then we can live in those, you know. So, you know, we, we talk about anxiety, this pandemic of anxiety. And in Chinese medicine, we simply see that as a, a pattern of overthinking. Mm, wow. Yeah. Stop thinking so much, guys. <laughs> Stop thinking so much. Get out of your head, man. Come back to the body. So, so that's a good point. So how do you stop thinking so much? Well, I, I think it's a little bit about um, becoming aware of what you're bringing into your mind. Like what are you allowing your mind to be thinking about? Like take the steering wheel of your mind and be very aware of where you point it. So if you're pointing your mind every single day at, you know, endless sources of information that have nothing to do with what's important and meaningful to you, like it's just entertainment, then the mind can be very scattered. It gets scattered easily because it needs a focus. And if it's focusing on this and that, this, that, it's kind of like a telescope. It goes down and it sucks up whatever it's focusing on. So if you're focusing on too many things, you can suck up a jumble. And then the thinking's all jumbled. It's hard to be clear and hard to be aware because you're busy thinking. So awareness is lighter. It's it's the bigger, higher view, and it can see the whole picture, whereas thinking is kind of zooms down and into detail. So a lot of people today have mental health problems because they put their mind on too many things. Mm, that's really... And, and so when you were talking about, you know, this whole idea of heart felt uh, or heart driven thinking and connecting that up was, you know, give, can you give us some practical examples of what that is like how, when you bring in, what's the difference between normal thinking and uh, more of a heart, heart uh, connected mind or heart connected thinking is the word I wanted, heart connected thinking, I turned your your well, heart connected mind. thinking is, is just about being very awake. So we're very awake. Like right now, I'm really awake to your question. You're asking me, you know, what's heart connected thinking about? So I'm awake to what the environment is. I'm awake to the fact that we're in an interview and we're trying to focus on something here. So I'm awake to your question. And then I'm aware of how I want to respond to that. Mm. So I link those two connections like there's an outside request there's an inside response so being awake to what's happening outside us and aware of what's happening inside us mm. and then bringing those together we we are automatically heart connected and mostly it's about being very present yeah I was gonna ask you that <laughs> <laughs> so so how do you get how you teach this and you're with people who've got <laughs> conditions because they're not present right and they've got you know thinking challenges and body challenges so how do you get present well you just choose <laughs> I love it <laughs> <laughs> it choose to be present choose yeah. to show up right here in the moment you're in yeah. with the person you're with in the situation you're in Give your energy to this very experience. Be awake to what the experience is asking of you. Be aware of how you want to respond and connect based on that. So here we are, like we're in an open-hearted space. I love you. You love me. We're coming from the same place. So there's, a, there's an openness. <laughs> it's an openness and expansion, you know, from the get-go. So we can go, Wee, let's open up around this. Whereas if we came into a space where we're feeling judged or criticized or shamed or put down, we might naturally want to cover the heart up a bit because mm. that's actually not a healthy place for us to be very open hearted. Mm. Mm. So this heart has an intelligence and it's 
you know, it's it's a it's a full body awareness. So uh, my body will tell me how I feel about what's yes. happening in the environment. My body yeah. will be at ease and relaxing when I'm with people I want to be with. Or my body might be a little more alert when I'm not feeling that comfortable and connected. And so just with that, uh, you help people with heartache and relationship challenges and who can't be present in their relationships. You help them with healing and how they grow so that they can be more comfortable with showing their heart. So can you just walk us through the process that you essentially use for someone, say, who's really comes to you and says, my husband's just a bastard. <laughs> or my mother's driving me crazy. How mm. do you walk through your, uh, you know, I don't want to make it, make it really small, but how do, you, how do you actually help people to come into this heart-centeredness in their relationships? Well, I think being aware that communication, you know, and heart-centered communication, any type of communication, thinking communication, for communication to be effective, you've got to really consider what's the context. So if you're saying, okay, I'm in a relationship with a bastard, <laughs> my husband's a I'm bastard. Not by the way. I'm not by uh, the uh, way. <laughs> okay, let's say somebody no, else husband. is in a husband relationship <laughs> with a bastard. <laughs> then, you know, the question to ask ourselves, is that true? <laughs> Serious. Like if, if the person is truly a bastard. It up? <laughs> no, 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 that, that's no. true. Like we need to ask that but question. Is, it... is this person truly a bastard? Like <laughs> let's let's get some truth into this. Because some people are bastards, in which case you have to watch your heart around that person in relationship. But maybe it's that you've got memories of being in relationship with a bastard. And then so someone comes up close to you and it gets all your, you know, memories activated and you become very, you know, uh, nervous and protected and defensive. And it's actually, they're not a bastard, but they're just reminding you of that. So we've all got these coverings that go over the heart. Yes, so a big part of what I do with people is just help them get really truthful about what they're feeling yes. and ask the question, is this appropriate? Is what I'm feeling appropriate? Because if someone's a bastard, then it might be appropriate to stay away from them. Hmm. But, well, if, but it, does that, because <laughs> I also know you're a, you, you are practice, you have, you're practicing Buddhist, is that correct? Or am I, have a, I imagine? No, yogi. I'm yoga. a yogi. Yeah. yeah. So in, the, in some of those traditions, there's no, nobody is any one thing. It's just that our repetitive thoughts towards something mean that we have a story. So in the case of a bastard, and I'm just saying, you know, yeah. the, the, the word for a start and, uh, is, comes from us, a sen you know, it's, it's, a, it's a conditioned word and we've told ourselves over and over and, and that essentially can come from, it can come from our family situation when we're young and it can come from, you know, when we're accumulations through our life, it can come ancestrally. So how do you separate, because this is, I know a lot of people really struggle with this, is it actually the other person or is it just that built up pattern of thinking that you have created over a long period of time that actually so you're continually picking up the but the you know i might have to edit this the beatard signals as opposed to the uh it's your thinking mm, well i uh, you know back to what i was saying before so we've got awareness which mm. is the highest view so if we go to the highest view of a situation, so we can imagine we're, we're sitting on the top of the mountain, we're looking down and we can see the playing field, we see the players on the field mm. and we see how they play and how they relate and how they interact. And some of the way that people play together is healthy, it's appropriate, it's nurturing. And some of the way that people play together is too competitive, it's bullying, it's, it's not sharing the ball, it's that kind of thing. So to go from a higher point of view and just take ask the question, what's appropriate here? 
what's the context for this relationship? So if this relationship is, you know, I'm playing rugby and, you know, I'm, this is the last game of the year and I've got to put my body on the line and, you know, compete, compete, compete. Entirely appropriate to have that way. But if if I'm there with my one human who's meant to be my ultimate partner and I'm playing that kind of game, that might not be appropriate. Mm. That's really so it's, it's appropriate. That's a really key word for the heart. Like, when a healthy you or appropriate appropriate for the situation hmm. appropriate for the the context of the relationship so when i when i'm looking at any relationship dynamics i'm going okay who am i in position to this person hmm. are they my friend in which case it's equal and you know hmm. reciprocity Mm. Am I their teacher? Am I their practitioner? Are they in a vulnerable place? In which case I'm mm. more in a guardian. I've got to look after them. Mm. So what's appropriate for the positioning of that relationship? That's mm. a really great way to take a look at a relationship and yeah. then consider how do the dynamics go? That's really amazing. I've never kind of really, because I mean, we all have those roles, right? Within our, you know, like if you're a mother, you're a mother. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I still get rung by my, you know, young adult yeah. children. Mum, should I eat this pork chop? It's two days over the best, you know. Like, <laughs> I can't step out of that. But I haven't thought about it in terms of, like, you and I. Mm. You know, I've never really. I just like you. I just go, you know, I'm a Leo, and my heart's always open. But <laughs> it's actually that's actually so powerful. Like, you and I, what's our relationship in this moment? What's appropriate in our relationship? What's appropriate? I've never thought about. That's like. Yeah, well, what I, really I mean, like that. that's, that's, awesome. a, that's a present time positioning. Yeah. Right? So if I want to course correct my destiny, I might have been, you know, in situations in the past where it wasn't equal, it wasn't balanced. And I can blame all the people back there and, <laughs> you know, talk about that story back there forever. Or I can just yeah. come right to now and just ask myself right here in this moment, yeah. what's healthy and appropriate? for me in this connection mm. what is the connection mm. and are we playing the rules of the roles so like yeah. in yeah. in games for example you know like rugby okay or tennis you know <laughs> so you know like you have certain rules you stand behind the baseline you, you know serve someone has a turn at serving they smash each other around a little bit whoever gets the ball out the next one has a turn you know so you know the game you know the rules so there's a certain amount of structure and containment around that connection. Mm. But in our familiar relationships, almost always, there's no rules. No. So I'm going to ask you that. Like, <laughs> so say your sister, right? Yep. Younger sister. I've got two sisters. Sister. One older, one a sister, one younger. So when you think about that, you just go, my older sister, my younger sister, oldest sister, younger, well, you know, my Taina, my Tangani, if you're, you know, Māori. Uh, you just think about them as being older or younger. You don't think about, oh, I'm a kaitiaki to this sister, even though she's older, or I'm a, you know, I'm a teacher to this sister because she's young. Yeah, it's it's a really because it, it it kind of comes outside with your way of teaching about relationships and what's appropriate to the heart. Asks you to look at a relationship not based on the conditioned rules of society, but on what you intuit to be your relationship with the person. Nice. Yeah, I like the way you put that together. And and that's it. You know, in, in one of my courses, I've just created a course. I, I created it a couple of years ago, actually, but I haven't run it yet. And I'm, I'm running it as a, as a coaching program, group coaching program in March. Mm. And I'm calling it Being in Love and Being Yourself because... When we're in love with someone and, you know, we're, we're in a relationship that's really important to us, we can often move over, you know, we can abandon ourselves to keep the peace or to keep things, you know, rolling nicely and please yeah. other and appease the situations and da da da. So yeah. how do we be ourselves fully, wholly and solely yeah. in a relationship? And I, yeah. what I realize about that is that there aren't too many guidelines that I created that course based on that because mm. I thought, yeah, I work with this every single day, mm. you know, as part of my practice. There's always a relationship element. I mean, people come in, you know, I had a guy 
yesterday he, he came in, you know, high anxiety and that's why he came. That's why he was referred. And, you know, he's had a couple of sessions, feeling a lot better. I gave him a mox stick. He settled down, his mind settling. And he's got, he's got his, uh, a big ceremony that he's approaching and he's sort of worried about that. And so we talked a lot about the relationship dynamics and I said, well, why are you doing it? And he said, I really want my grandfather to experience this before he dies. And I went, wow. Yeah, so it's like a kaitiaki there, even though, yeah, you know, is it a guardian? Just, you know, his, his grandfather has huge mana. He wants to honor him. He wants yeah. to, you know, really show him. And all the people at that ceremony are of his lineage. So mm. I said, go and stand up. And when you stand up and have to do your speaky bit, which he's terrified of, just think about that. Position yourself and I'm here out of respect to my grandfather and this is a wonderful day and it's bringing all the people that come from the lineage of that man and I'm going to hold that awareness. That's why I'm doing it rather than, oh my God, I'm the center of attention for all these 300 people. <laughs> Did you hear Hana Rapati YP Clark's maiden speech in Parliament? I'm just got to do it. No, you asked show. me that the other day. Oh man, tell me, tell me. Oh, you have to watch it. And anyone who's listening, Hana Rafati Waipi Clark, she is 21. She stood up in our parliament. He not only did she honour all of her uh, hapu, uh, uh, her iwi tainoi, but her grandparents. And yeah. I just, the way she stood there and the way she spoke, I was just like, how does that, how does a 21 year old? assemble all of those bits of whakapapa to stand and also to take on some of the big things of patriarchy which are being stirred by this dragon of 2024. And, Yay! Um, <laughs> Rocket the sisterhood! <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, like this is what Pluto and this is what this dragon is about, which is why I'm going to lead seeking us onto our next uh, question. Like, this Aquarian energy, the dragon that's just risen literally this morning, and it really is a dragon rising. We are mm. literally handing over, as a generational 1500 year ship, we're handing over the power to the kids, the canny little Aquarian air signs. <laughs> and they rule the internet. They are young. They are the them days. We are giving it, we are, we are relinquishing control. So, how are you playing with this energy and these things and helping people come into their heart as we ride this massive tanifa? How are you helping in 2024? Well, my aim this year is to go high visibility, which is really outside of my natural way. I've been low visibility all of my life in terms of big uh, big audiences, but I'm really aware that the young people are the leaders and I'm aware that the young people that I know are teachers for me right now and, you know, I'm very aware they've come with this new lightness of being. So my generation, I was born in 61, so I, that was when the Iranian energy was coming into being and now we're like 60 years on. And those young Iranian leaders are here now. And I feel as a Iranian individual, I want to sort of put these ancient wisdom teachings out, plain, simple truth, like how to honor your heart, how to honor other, how to connect, how to have heart to heart, real relationships, how to be true to you, like all the simple, simple stuff that people don't know because these young people are connected. They're doing Facebook, Twitter, blah, 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 all that, you know, they can virtually just send that stuff out far and wide, which is really exciting. As you know, I can barely set up a Zoom. Oh, <laughs> so, you know, it's Don't like, you know, they, they can spread and Don't share this that. stuff really fast. Don't say that on the internet. Oh, sorry, sorry. Reframe it, please. Sorry. I Reframe it. So that. I am myself right at this moment taking off on the back of the dragon with the virtual world like i have been waiting pausing ready for my pounce moment and this is it 2024 like ride that dragon baby <laughs> I love that. that's such a better way to talk that's way more yeah, there you go. 
Thank you, thank you. Who's honouring your relationship in this moment with the Aquarian dragon? There we go. Thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. I will never dish it again. I'm going to lock that in. (laughs) Yeah. No, because, and I really love that you're, you know, I think, uh, but I would like to bring up a, 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 a question, I guess, around, because one of the things that I notice is that one of the struggles with the online space, the digital space, is the bombarding of information, the isolation, the disconnection, the loneliness, the overwhelm. So how can how can we manage that and also deepen who we are in our hearts? Well, I, I think in terms of uh, individual management, is turn it off. <laughs> not now, please. <laughs> not this moment. moment. Don't not, do it at this moment. Now. Not during an interview. But, you know, you, you can use it for meaningful connection. Mm. You have some purpose around your connection. And if you're just mindlessly scrolling and you're tired or you haven't been outside today, then just... Turn it off. Like, I, I laugh when I hear this thing about AI taking over it. Like, AI has zero power with us turning it on, right? Zero. So we are the powerful people. We have the power. We have inner technologies that are being awakened mm. and this capacity to connect and share and, and spread. The AI is supporting us to do that. Mm. And come together, you know, a thousand people can come together in one space and, and do some meditation and send some meditation energy to someone that they love and care about. So we can use it in that way. And then I think for individual use, it's really important to recognize that consuming thinking is the same as consuming food. It uses the same energy. Mm. So we use digestive power to digest thoughts and ideas and information in the same way we use digestive power to digest our lunch. Mm. So you wouldn't just sit, you know, for five hours and just eat, 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 eat. Come on, some people do. <laughs> well, you would have had a feast, you know, like a Māori feast or something, but you wouldn't do it on an everyday thing, right? So that that's what people are doing. They're just indiscriminately eating, eating, eating. And, and then it's, real, it's really funny you say that because I was with another teacher and she was saying because of the way, particularly wheat and some of the processed foods that we had, it means our digestive system never gets a rest. So at night we're not doing our healing because they were still digesting. Yeah, and that's so true of our thoughts, as you said. Like you, you know, so we have to rest and digest. Them. Yeah, we do. And and yeah. I'm also thinking just on what you said. Do you, what's our relationship with the internet, with our socials? <laughs> what do you say, or does it a change? That was a bit of a... I'm not sure what you're asking. Well, you, you were talking about relationships and how it's so important. And essentially, I was asking you, what, do, what is our relationship with the internet? What is our relationship with social media? It's whatever you choose it to be. But do we ask that? And would you? Is well, I do. That's, that's why up until now I haven't really been engaged in it much because I'm, I don't do Twitter. Like as in, you know, brrr, I'd rather be quiet at the beach, having a body surf, go for a walk outside, um, you know, cooking a nice meal with a quiet mind. Like I really value quiet mind because I had to learn from a young age how to steer that because there was a lot of unquiet mind around me and I thought, I don't want to grow up like that. So I've put a lot of energy into keeping my mind, you know, relatively still and I can still it whenever I want to. So that's of high value to me. And so for me, using the whole social media thing, it's like I'm messaging out things that are meaningful for me around that. I'm not wanting to message people and talk about what we ought to have for dinner take a picture of it so how do you want to use it you know that's up to you and so again i think that there's almost this misconception that ai is ruling us it's like no we're the ones with the power yeah we're the ones with the on button and if we don't you know like having too much digital stuff in our space just turn it off (laughs) 
And she, it's like your said than done though. And I literally no, that's an it's an addiction. It's addiction to intensity. You know, a little dopamine hit. Like, oh, look who's you know someone loves me. Let's go, go, go. You know, it's, it's like love yourself. You know, love love the people you're with and blah 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 or whatever. But don't give it too much power. It doesn't have power without us. Just like the the external authorities, they don't have power. Mm. unless we say yes to it mm. is, is we, we've had this external authority focus yeah. for centuries you you bring it up yeah internal authority is where it's at you know the queen of our being the the ruler of our life lives inside us mm. our awareness and our access to the highest consciousness it's inside mm. our body and our being it, it's nothing to do with a computer the true so powers. Cultivating that takes a bit of practice, right? So some of the yeah. practical suggestions, and <laughs> I'm only saying this because I talked to yeah. a, uh, one of my neighbours and she said she threw out her son's laptop and his, she, no, she, well, she didn't throw it, out, throw it out, but she took it off him, wrestled yeah. it off him, Great. his phone and his laptop and put it in something away. Yeah. But that is like radical action. If you're wanting to break this yourself and come into like what are some of the practical what are some of the practical ways you can really cultivate that strength of well life? i would do what your neighbor did just find a bag that will fit that computer and that phone get one with a zip <laughs> turn it off put it in <laughs> zip it up it's as practical as that like choose yeah so what, have choose some how to use your dragon power. Choose how to use your magic. Choose how to use your presence. Do you want to show up and be present and really awake and aware with the people that you love and care about? Or do you want to have the little phone dominating the meeting? And if it goes off, oh, you know, off you go, distracted, you know, off you go and give your energy something else. Like decide where to put your energy. Like choose how to think. If you can't, do that learn to do that <laughs> that's lovely i think that's really so in terms of uh this year is the best is there something that if people want to connect with you is there something that you're sharing you know in the next wee while that people connect with? yeah 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 i'm doing a uh invoking the wood dragon course which starting uh on the 12th it's going to be five sessions, the 12, 15, 19, 22, 25 February. So in two different times here in New Zealand, so midday, which is about 1 a.m. London time, mm -hmm. and then again at 7 uh, p.m., which is 8 a.m. London time. So I'm, I'm making these times, you know, two times for all time zones to jump in and sharing teachings on this you know the dragon awakening and stirring like what we're feeling and then offering teachings on the five elements so we're in the wood dragons so the wood is like the energy of spring it's the energy of beginnings it's the energy of dynamic assertion it's go-go energy it's uh soul energy mm. right so this is a time to to honor your deep yearnings the soul knows what it needs to grow and evolve and when we start listening to those little whispers mm. you know and attune ourselves with that deeper self then boof off we go so anyway i'm doing these five sessions of that and then after that in march i'm doing my being in love being yourself a mm. short course i have some free stuff on um anxiety is a quest for meaning is the thing that i've been really passionate about mm. saying like I mentioned the guy I saw yesterday. So he came to me with anxiety, like it's a problem. And I'm like, you just think too much. How do we change that? You know, like, Put your head in a bag and zip it up. <laughs> <laughs> there we don't, go. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't joke. do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Maybe a pillowcase. <laughs> you know, you might be so focused on the zip and the size of the bag. And so the mind just goes, Whoop. and that's all anxiety you know like with anxiety it's you know it's, it's generalized anxiety like lots of labels for it right social anxiety it's like oh i don't like talking to people i've got social anxiety so you know it's like we love labeling <laughs> but if we go what is much. anxiety it's overthinking <laughs> so learn how to not think so much yeah i love that i really do that's really awesome
So yeah. if people want to reach out to you, uh, and we'll have the links below, the links are below, but uh, if people really want to, like, they want to hit you up and they want to learn more about this particular dragon, this woody dragon, this new dragon, <laughs> and some of the other five uh, base energies which are part of Chinese medicine which you practice, which is, how is the best way for them to reach out to you? My website. Hmm. So it's just dub 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 Cameron Tukapua dot com. Can you so spell Tukapua? The yes, T U K for kiss, A P U A for people, and then Tukapua. Tukapua. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ah. Like standing on the earth and our head in the heavens, it, that's the kind of core philosophy of Chinese medicine. So when I met my partner, I, I knew that we would have to be together. <laughs> I wanted that name. So it's Tu Kapua. Tu. Tu Kapua. Yeah, Tu, to stand, yeah. Kapua, the cloud. Cool. Yeah. Cameron Kapua. So Cameron standing on the earth, head in the heaven. That that's what I that's how I see the world that we're in. You know, we're here to have these earthly lives, but we have this divine nature, this whole true, beautiful nature. And a part of life we're all as well and all as one. So we attune ourselves more to that and we feel that. We feel it in our body, we bring it into our relationships, we can land it in our life, a form, you know, at home. Yeah, connections, yeah. That's what gets me up in the morning. I, I just feel like, God, we've been living in such a weird paradigm for so long and and I see the crazy people in the world, people with mental health problems, they're just extra aware. Mm. They're not crazy, they're the barometer. Mm. So, you know, we, we label all this stuff, depression, anxiety as a mental health. It's like, no, 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 it's, it's actually... The psyche going, I'm disturbed. Mm. What are you disturbed about? Well, if you thought that the the narrative that we're being served up was the was reality, you would be disturbed. Mm. But there's a truer reality. You know, we're all as well, all as one. People are mostly good and beautiful. Mm. Like most of the people you know are good and beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. There's yeah. a few bastards, you know, genuine bastards. <laughs> you know, a few people that have really <laughs> lost their way. <laughs> And, you know, they need to be put in the naughty corner and time out. So it's like you treat them like that. You stay away from those people. But most people are actually pretty good. Mm. And that is the truth of the world. But we served mm. up a world like there's a war on every corner and there's, you know, poverty. Yeah, there's, there is mm. poverty. There's, there's no doubt that these issues exist. However, in the background of our lives, all our lives, we have communities, families, you know, friends, people that we know that we can lean into for support and we can give them support and, and that changes everything. I love that. Thank you very much for that, Cameron. And I'm going to ask you to close with your wisdom and your beauty and your heart to close our session. So remember everyone, links are below if you want to reach out to Cameron. I'll use the same karakia. Te aroha, te whakapono, te rangi mari e tato tato e. Thank you everyone, Māori ora. Māori ora. Kia ora, thank you. Friends, friends, if you liked that video, subscribe so you can uh, listen to more of these interviews that I conduct with conscious leaders who are going to teach you how to embody the Tanifa, embody your dragon power in 2024, because never was there a time when uh, we need more conscious leaders. So I look forward to connecting more with you. Subscribe and uh, see you soon.